Yo, what is up guys? It's the Nightwing at Way of Life Esports coming at you guys with another League of Legends video here today. If you are an LCK fan, this is some really interesting news because here are the 10 confirmed teams for the franchise LCK in 2021. Only one team from the 2020 season didn't make the final cut. So that should probably uh, already give away who didn't make it, which is probably APK Prince. They were pretty fucking terrible. The LCS... The LEC and the LPL are already franchise leagues. The LCK has great player development from what we can already see from the international results. They have a great uh, system where they develop players and they have so much money put into their scene. It was just a wonder why they weren't franchised sooner. But let's see who are the 10 teams for the franchise LCK in 2021. The 10 League of Legends teams participating in the first franchise season of the LCK in 2021 were revealed last night, according to Corizon and former reporter Kenzie. 21 companies reportedly submitted applications to join the league earlier this year, including South Korean organizations competing in the Challenger League and Overwatch. International organizations like Face Clan and NRG also reported also reportedly considered applying, but ultimately decided not to. Another organization launched a crowdfunding campaign with a goal of reaching 20 million, but it didn't come close to that goal and ultimately decided to cancel the project. Out of the 10 selected teams, only one wasn't already in the LCK. Interesting. Borian Esports will replace Seoul uh, Prince, who came in last place in the 2020 Summer Split. This choice was supposedly already made in August since the reported finalists matched the definitive list that was already revealed. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, because APK prints were bad. Like, they were just bad. So, you know, why would you continue, you know, keeping them already, you know, um, in the system? Like, you might as well just kick them out. In 2021, franchising will aim to strengthen LCK's competency and ultimately create a more satisfying experience for all participants of the league, according to Riot. Here's the list of the 10 selected organizations to participate in the newly franchised LCK. Number one, Dam1 Gaming. I mean, they literally just won Worlds. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you want to keep this org. They've also uh, just won the last past uh, 2020 LCK Summer Split. Uh, they've been a powerhouse in the LCK ever since they came in. I mean, it would be a disservice and a dishonor to them by not keeping them. So, yeah, uh, Dam1 Gaming is here. Dragon X, okay. Then you also have Gen G. That's one of the teams I had called that would stay. Gen G have a lot of uh, great things outside of League of Legends, so it makes perfect sense why you would want to keep Gen G. Also, if you want to remember them as formerly, you know, Samsung Galaxy, then yeah, they also won Worlds as well. Then you also have T1, Long Time organization world champions faker coma you guys know the story Africa freaks weirdly enough they're pretty popular but they just aren't really ever good but i guess like it's fine having Africa freaks uh kt roaster long-standing organization and uh esports org in korea the rivals to t1 this is fine sandbox um interesting but i guess that's fine you know, I think Sandbox is fine. Uh, Team Dynamics, I didn't see much out of them uh, this year. But hopefully, now that it's franchised, they'll be able to do a lot more. Hanwha Life, yeah, I don't know why you keep this team, but okay. And then you have the um, new org, which is Borayan Esports. Borayan is no stranger to the South Korean competitive league scene. It joined Challengers Korea in 2019 under the name Brian Blade, and then renamed to High Fresh Blade, where the team regularly made it to top three. The company is also a sports marketing group that manages dozens of athletes in South Korea, ranging from baseball to soccer and golf. LCK teams that join the league in the 2021 season will be protected from relegation uh, to the Challengers League since they bought their franchise spots in the league for several seasons to come and will receive a portion of its revenue on the other hand they accepted several terms such as reported a as a reported application fee of 10 million and paying all their players at least 16 million korean won around uh 49,000 uh per year wait so they make just about as much as teachers do 
in the LCK. So they must have been making no money here. Like, if they're just making, like, 49000 roughly from, like, American money, as you can translate that, they must have been making, like, nothing. They literally must have been making, like, nothing. So it's actually really, really good that the LCK is getting franchised. So I'm really happy that teams like Damwon, DragonX, uh, Genji, T1, uh, Freak of Freaks, KT Roaster all get to make the league. Uh, these have been orgs uh, that have done the LCK great. Uh, these have all been orgs that have, you know, uh, won titles except for a freak of freaks, but they have come close a couple of times. They have reached the finals, so it's not like they've been, you know, complete dog shit forever. Um, Sandbox and Team Dynamics have a new interesting look on things because you can look at their perspective and go, okay, now that we're safe and we have our spots in the league, maybe we can try out uh, newer players and, and see uh, how we can do better for 2021. Uh, Hama Life is continuous dog shit. I don't expect anything from them. They're actual trash, so that's what I expect from them. But other than that, yeah, these are your 10 franchise teams uh, for the LCK in 2021. If you're an LCK fan, what do you think about this? And we have one more piece of news. Cajo parts ways with XL Esports, steps back from professional play. The LEC jungler will transition into a freelance role. XL Esports is moving on from LEC jungler Cajo, the organization announced today. The 24-year-old also said he'll be taking a break from competing in professional League of Legends. Cajol joined uh, XL in December 2018 and played four complete splits uh, for the LEC organization. XL finished as a middle-of-the-pack or bottom-of-the-barrel team each time, failing to reach the LEC playoffs. XL Esports tweeted, uh, Thank you, at Cajol. Thank you for joining us on this journey for the past two years. Thank you for putting... Your trust into XL back in 2018. Thank you for everything. There will always be a home for you here. Now go smash whatever you do next. Until next time, hashtag thrive together. There are no rumors yet about who might be XL's jungler for the up and coming split. The org has no substitute junglers on its main roster and might look to promote Academy jungler uh, Taxer. Uh, that is a long name. Holy crap. Look at this name. Christian Vendelbo by Ling Jensen. What name is that? Uh, <laughs> to the main roster, Excel could also try to acquire an external player as part of its rebuild for the up and coming split. Kedro has shown great talent in the other areas after his team failed to qualify for the playoffs. He made an appearance on the LC LEC broadcast as an analyst and was a part of the World Championship State Farm Analyst Desk. His insight and analysis allowed fans to get a better understanding of how pro players think and how to become a better league player overall. And then he also has his, his announcement right here. A couple hours after Kedro left XL, he posted an update on his future plans. He's taking a break from pull play and will pursue a freelance role. This could make him a great addition uh, for the LEC broadcast, which operates with most casters or analysts on a freelance contract basis. While this is just speculation, it wouldn't be a surprise after seeing how well his fit on the broadcast team in the past. Let's see what he actually had to say. Hey guys, um, I just wanted to make an announcement video about my future. Um, my heart is pounding right now and I'm shaking, but hopefully I can do this all in one take. Uh, I feel like the last three years of playing in the LEC has been an unbelievable experience. Um, I've made so many different friends from so many different backgrounds. And I've made so many different memories with them that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Uh, I did find a home in XL over the last two years when I swapped to playing jungle. Um, and although it was fun to play in XL, I just feel like I wasn't able to bring them the results that I expected. I had such high expectations coming into my... LEC split with uh, with XL and I tried my hardest to push myself and the team that I was on to be as successful as possible but in the end um, we weren't able to achieve the results and I can only really um, I can only really blame myself for that um, I think um, over the last couple of months I've realized um, a lot of ha I found a lot of happiness in my life um, I think casting and being on the desk and meeting all these great people behind the scenes has been so much fun for me. 
it's almost like a spark in my life. I think um, I think now is a good time for me to uh, step away from being a pro player. Although it's been something that I've loved so much as a kid. Hmm. I feel like it's really difficult to live a life and achieve lots of personal goals and desires when you have this restraint of eyes on you and pressure to perform. So I'm definitely taking a step back and moving forwards. I feel like life's all about moving on. And um, someone very close to me said, if I spend my life looking through open doors and all these things that I want to do, then I'll just end up living my life in the hallway. So I'm taking a big jump here and moving into sort of like a freelance role. Um, I'm definitely going to carry on playing lots of solo queue and try to be as good as possible as a player still. Um, just not in a competitive environment and thank you guys for all the support you've given me over the last three years. I'm sure you'll see what's happening in my future soon. Um, but I um, I hope you can continue to support me um, wherever I go and thank you to everyone. Yeah. Well, that was actually pretty nice. Um... He wasn't the reason why XL were ever bad. XL were just bad because XL just suck. Um, other than that, I'm happy to see that, you know, he's moving on. And, you know, I've always explained that, you know, moving on is the best thing that you could possibly do. Because moving on literally shows that, you know, you are willing to take that next step and not just constantly try to focus on something that you know you can't be good at, you know, or a achieve what you want. You know, I I'm always a firm believer in moving on because that's why I think a lot of teams should do when they're not having success is just move on. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, I want to see what Kajo is going to be doing after this. Uh, we probably just end up being on the LEC broadcast, let's be honest here. Uh, after that, then maybe he might return to being a pro player. He says he's not retiring, he's just taking a, he's just basically taking a step back. So yeah, see you guys later. Like, comment, oh my lord, my mouth cannot work today. Like, comment, subscribe, most of all enjoy. I'm the Nightwing, and Way of Life Esports is signing out, guys. Peace. Have a good day. Hi there, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>